Hello, this is John Zimmerman from Tablet Class Math, and I want to put together this quick uh, video for you out there that are studying multiplication. Okay, so just a couple thoughts on it and some of the ways we think about it, and maybe a, a unique um, approach to multiplying that you likely don't see till maybe uh, later on when you're studying algebra. So this video is geared towards anybody who's maybe reviewing uh, the basics of multiplication of course or in middle school or even high school so let's take a look at um, uh, what I have down here I have groups of little flags okay so if you kind of look at them we can see that they're groups of two okay so multiplication is all about counting right it's really about counting things up but when we count things we want to be smart so I can certainly count these flags up just one at a time out one two three four five six seven eight now there's eight flags here and I could just kind of count them you know by just looking at them and counting along now of course that may not be the best approach to do this okay because they're equal groups because I have groups of two I have two here I also have two here I also have two here and I also have two here well then I can count these flags in a different way okay and that's what multiplication is about it's really counting um, up things in in groups okay so here I have four groups of two so we have two things and we have four groups of them so if I want to count them up I'm going to multiply all right so two times four I have two and four of these groups one two three four I have four groups of two items okay so two times four of course is eight now let's suppose you didn't know that let's suppose you didn't know two times four equals eight well how do you how do you learn multiplication well there's a lot of probably there's there's probably a good amount of debate on this but I'm kind of an old school traditional learner and <laughs> I believe in probably what most of you've seen and that is um, a multiplication table okay so multiplication table we kind of use uh, after we understand the the basic concept of multiplication kind of need to kind of get into using what we call rote memorization just kind of remembering and learning then over time you can obviously apply these skills so most of you probably seen a, a multiplication uh, table and I wanted to say something here for those of you that are, uh, that are uh, not only studying multiplication but are doing division as well. In order to um, be very good at uh, division and to really understand that, you have to have to master multiplication. Okay, they're almost uh, when people have problems, students have problems with division, it's because they have problems with multiplication. Okay, all right, so. How does the multiplication table work? Well, most of you probably already know this, but let's review. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's go to our two times four. Okay, so here you would go two. You got you got numbers from zero to nine. Okay, and then zero to nine on the top. Okay, both vertical and horizontal. So I can kind of crisscross. I can go two and four. So if I go two and four here, well, we know that two times four is eight. Now what we do is we kind of count these things up. If I didn't know this, of course, I could just kind of figure this out. I have two times four, and I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I knew, I know, just by kind of counting, that two times four is equal to eight. And I can do multiple different groups. I can look at this group, for example. This would be what? How many groups of two do I have? Well, I have three groups of two, so this would be two times three. Let's kind of count them up. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So two times three is equal to six. Let's kind of fill that in our chart. So here you can see in my three column that two times three, and this is just kind of what this means here when we, when we kind of go this way and this way with the numbers. And both ways work. Two times three is six. And if you notice, I can even go this way. Here's a two and here's a three here. Okay, okay my chart's kind of getting messed up here, but two times three is six right here. And then let's go to four times two. If we kind of look, if we kind of look at this four and this two, we know that's eight. So and to kind of save you time, and so you don't have to do all this counting 
up, you basically we have this multiplication table that we kind of want to uh, memorize. Now there's uh, various debates on, you know, should you have, should students just use force memory or rote memory to kind of, I personally think yes. <laughs> I think you should, you, you need to memorize this even if you don't quite understand the groups because um, once you get this basic table down, everything will, will, will um, become easier. Now, once again, I'll just state it again. I know it probably sound like a broken record here. Uh, some people feel like, well, you should do things in uh, in another manner, okay? Especially, uh, you know, those folks studying uh, the new Common Core math might be a little bit of a different approach in, in terms of their their strategy and uh, learning multiplication, okay? For me, this is more of a traditional manner. So you got to get the multiplication table down, but. You, but let's understand what it is, okay? It's just counting things up in equal groups, okay? Now, once you have the multiplication uh, table down, let's kind of go here. Let's just look at one more quick example, by the way, of the multiplication table. Let's say we have um, five and six, okay? So you got to fill all this table out. I'm certainly not going to do it in this video. If I want to know what five times six is, okay, I would just go right here, and that would be 30. Okay, and of course I could just look at uh, six groups of five or five groups of six and count them up and that would be 30. And then of course I can also reference that right here, six times five. So this right here would also be 30. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of numbers to kind of fill in here, but zero to nine uh, in both the, the vertical and horizontal uh, columns, or the rows and columns, excuse me. Okay, let's go and take a look at multiplication we have let's say like uh, a one digit multiplied by two digits so this is something that you probably learn oh probably in the third or fourth grade I'm thinking somewhere around there I'm actually a middle and high school math teacher so I'm just kind of going by, by the things that I've seen um, you know elementary students that come to me at the middle school level and of course I'm a parent as well so but anyways let's take a look at a um, a problem that you would you would be faced you know in the elementary level so 4 times 13 so most of you out there would be taught they would go 13 times 4 we put a little multiplication mark like this a multiplication symbol and then what we'll, we'll, we would go 3 times 4 right so that would be 12 so we're going to put our 2 here and carry our 1 and then go 4 times 1 like right here that's 4 right 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is uh, 5, so that's 52. Now, if you're learning multiplication and you don't understand that, well, this is this is a big deal. I mean, it's quite a process to get you to understand that. Now, where depending on where you're at, especially if you're doing a common core um, approach to, to multiplication, you may not be using this procedure. A uh, fancy word for this is called an algorithm. You might be using a different, entirely different uh, uh, method to get to 52. But you, you'll figure out that 13 times 4 is 52. Me personally, it's my opinion, just because uh, this this is the most traditional kind of method uh, uh, that was taught, okay, that 13 times 4 uh, equal 52. Do it in this manner is is it, it's just worked over the years, okay. So, but anyway, so 13 times 4 is 52. Kind of went over the procedure here. The purpose of this video is not to teach you the exact details of that, but just to kind of do a quick review. Now let's take a look at another way we could multiply 4 times 13 or 13 times 4. Another way is to go okay 4 times 13 but this time I'm gonna break 13 up into two different numbers okay to add up to 13. So let me think here what are two numbers that add up to 13? They could be any combination 1 and 12 add up to 13. I can kind of go on and on but I'm gonna use 10 and 3. Okay, so this is 4 times 13, but instead of writing the number 13, I'm going to write 10 plus 3 because 10 plus 3 is equal to 13. Now, what I'm going to show you is actually a property that we really, really use a lot in algebra, so I kind of want to introduce it 
this to you, but it's another way to uh, multiply and it's called the distributive property. But I think you'll like uh, how this goes. So here we're going to do 4 times 13. Of course my format is entirely different than, than this vertical format over here. So 4 times 13, I'm going to take the 4, I'm going to multiply it by 10. Okay, so 4 times 10 is 40. Now how would we know that? Well, we'd have to really kind of you know, master our multiplication table once again. So I can reference four. Well, it could be another column, groups of 10 here. Maybe you can probably add on a 10 and a 10 right here, but four times 10 is 40. All right, so four times 10 is 40. Now, because this is addition, I'm gonna put an addition symbol right here and I'm gonna go four times three. Okay, so four times three is what? That's 12, right? So now we have 40 plus 12, and that's 52. All right, so we can see we got the same answer. So the distributive property really comes in handy, especially in algebra. It's an actual, uh, absolutely critical um, um, property to help us solve equations and do all kinds of cool stuff when we get to uh, working with variables later on. But just to kind of uh, give you some thoughts here on multiplication, there's different approaches to it. Okay, so here I use a distributor property to do this problem 4 times 13. Here's an older, which I think is a more proven method, uh, 13 times 4. We still got the same answer. And there's even other methods out there. I'll leave you with this thought that whatever whatever method that you're learning okay if you're mastering multiplication and you understand it then stick with it okay um, I think the best method for you is the one that you understand uh, the most okay so if you're a proponent of doing multiplication in, in an entirely different way and it's working for your child or student then stick with it and, and now at least you have some other uh, methods here that you can evaluate and say wow okay I didn't know that or maybe I, I, I still like my method better but I think the thing with mathematics in general is many people get kind of stuck uh, in, well, we, ha we all, all of us have to learn math in a certain exact, certain, you know, it has to be taught in this way. Well, I certainly have my um, opinions on things, but really, I personally think that if the student is learning, if you are learning, and can you and you and you can produce the answer and you know why you're producing the answer every time successfully, then stick with that method. Anyways, if you want to know about uh, my uh, uh, math programs, um, my site is tabletclass.com. Okay, I focus on middle and high school mathematics. So if you want to come on by, we have a free demo. You take a look at it. Our courses start uh, at the pre-algebra level and go up from there. But anyways, thanks for uh, watching this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about multiplication and good luck to you.